Hey guys, it's Kelsey, and this video is going to be a beginner's guide for old school RuneScape players. Now, in order to get started, go to runescape.com and make your account, which with your email, your username, and your password. After that, you're going to want to download RuneScape, specifically old school RuneScape, because that's what this tutorial is on. And if you're familiar with my channel, you notice that I have a lot of guides on old school RuneScape. Now, the first thing I want to mention is that Old School RuneScape is available on mobile through an app on your phone and it will be available for Android and iOS by the end of October 2018. However, this guy is going to be focused on accessing RuneScape through the computer, but they're both very similar. Just one has a smaller screen and is touch screen. In this video, I'll be going through the tutorial very quickly and on how to get through it and then I'll be going over the different skills in RuneScape and some great ways to get started. Once you log in after you've downloaded the game you'll be brought up to this character selection. Go ahead and make the character how you would wish it to look like and then you get you can get started into the tutorial. Okay so I'm gonna go through the tutorial rather quickly but it'll get you through it. Okay so as soon as you've created your character how you would like it to be you can go ahead and talk to the RuneScape guide. And you're going to start seeing a flashing icon on the bottom right of your screen. So go ahead and check that out. But first you want to say whether you've played in the past or if you're brand new. If you're watching this video, you're going to be considered to be a brand new player. Go ahead and click on that. And then he's just going to keep talking. And that flashing icon on the right bottom of your, the right bottom of your screen is going to say options. This is really important because it's going to be the settings in the game. You can, you can do your brightness, you can do zooming out or zooming in, which is very helpful, and you can also um, enable your sound here, so if you don't like the music or sound effects, you can turn those off. Another thing you can do here is make it your, um, what is, uh, I'm trying to find out where it is, it is, oh yes, you can make your game client fixed, or you can make your game client full. Most people like to play in full, but I you may start off as fixed and so you can go ahead and expand your window. So here we're just going to continue talking to this guy. You can press the space bar to continue and then you're going to continue through this door. You can access your run energy up here and you can toggle that on so your character will run faster. Next we're going to talk to the survival expert. We're going to talk to her, go to our inventory, go ahead and click on a tree. The inventory will be flashing in on the right uh, lower side. So go ahead and cut two logs. You're also going to see other people in the tutorial working on getting through. You can right click them to see their username. Next, we're going to burn the one of the logs. So we're going to use our tinderbox on the log. It may take a little bit of some time. Next, there's going to be a flashing stat screen, so go ahead and click that. These are all the skill in RuneScape and what level you are in them. We're going to talk to her again, hit the space bar, she'll give us a net. We're going to click on this fishing spot, and we're going to go ahead and catch some shrimp. My suggestion is to catch two shrimp because you're going to burn the first shrimp when you try to cook it. So catch two shrimp. Next, use the shrimp on the fire, and you're going to burn it. I highly suggest at this moment you go to your options and you go to controls and you click click the shift button. This will allow you to hold shift down and click on an item to shift drop it. Otherwise you have to right click it and go down and press drop. But with this enabled you can do shift and drop. Next kick, uh, cook the next shrimp. Okay and we've finished that part of the tutorial so we're going to continue through the gate. And we're going to go down here to the cook and he's going to teach us how to make some bread and talk to us a little about a little bit about cooking different things in RuneScape. You can hit the space bar to speed through. We're going to be using the pot of flour on the bucket of water and you're going to get some bread dough, use it on the range. And once you have that, he's going there's going to be this flashing music player icon. Go ahead and look through that. That's going to be all your music tracks that you can play through. We're going to click on the door and continue. There's going to be a flashing emote icon below. We're going to click that and we're going to do the spin emote or any emote that you wish, but it is required to get to the next part. Next, it's showing your options icon. Basically, what it's showing is that you can press the run energy option, which I already discussed, but press it again because that's what's going to allow us to get to the next part. 
This guy is going to be talking about Quest in RuneScape, which I will be going in more depth at the tutorial. So you can uh, hit the space bar to continue, press the quest list, shows you all the quests in RuneScape that are free to play and members, which are a lot, and I highly suggest that you invest in them to learn more about the game. Climb down the ladder, and we're going to walk down here. This guy is going to be talking about mining and smithing. So we're going to go ahead and talk to the mining instructor. Press the space bar to continue unless you're interested in reading. He wants us to prospect the rock, so right click it and press prospect and it'll tell you that this rock is 10 then we're going to go over here and prospect this rock and it's going to tell us that it's copper so prospecting rocks around runescape will tell you what kind of rock they are and if you can mine it we're going to talk to him and he's going to give us a pickaxe now we're going to mine one of the each we're going to mine 10 and copper and we're going to use these two ores to make a bronze bar bronze bar can then can then be smelted to make armor so let's go over here and we're going to use this copper ore, or 10, it doesn't matter which one, on the furnace. And you're going to be making a bronze bar. Next thing you want to do is talk to the mining uh, instructor and he'll give you a hammer. And then that will allow us to make some weapons out of this bronze bar. So use the bronze bar on the anvil with your hammer and make a dagger. Next we'll be going through... The, um, the gate and we're going to start learning about combat. So we're going to go ahead and talk to the combat instructor who's a very high level with some cool gear on. Um, go ahead and go to the worn equipment and uh, basically now you're going to want to click, click on view equipment status and that tells you everything about your stats. Wield your bronze dagger and then talk to him. Now he's going to give you, you want to go ahead and equip this sword and shield and then there's going to be a flashing icon that says combat options click on that and this will show you the options to train attack strength and defense it will tell you which one you're training underneath so let's go ahead on this gate and go attack a giant rat we're going to go ahead and start training our attack so we'll keep it on stab audio retaliate is nice when it's on but i recommend that you turn that off for now but auto retaliate will basically be where if you're attacking something and uh, your character is standing still, it will automatically attack back. Talk to this guy again, and he's going to give you a bow and some arrows. The nice thing about this is you can shoot it through the fence. Oops, somebody's already attacking that, so here we go. You can shoot it through the fence, which is really cool. I'm having issues here. <laughs> there was a pillar in the way. So yeah, we're just going to continue attacking the rat through the fence. A really cool thing about this guy is that he's going to end up being a Slayer Master later in the game. So you're going to see him in the actual game as well as the tutorial, which is pretty neat. So once you've killed this rat, and as you can see here, you can click on Rapid, and you can change your stack attack styles, and you can train defense with long range with range as well. And range is going to be basically um, your bow and arrow skill. And combat's going to be training your attack, strength, and defense and your skill section. All right, as we go next, we're going to talk to the banker and discuss what it's like to have a bank in old school RuneScape. It's basically where you can keep all your items, which is really nice. Use the bank booth. And say yes, you want to access your bank account. And you can put any items in there if you wish, but I would wait till you're after the tutorial. Next, we're going to go to this poll booth. This is when you're in game, you'll be able to vote on new things that are coming into the game, which I highly recommend you get involved with the community and vote. They will be everywhere where a bank is, so go ahead and read the new updates coming into the game and vote on what you would like to be added and what not to be added. And then here, this guy tells you how to make money in the game. You're welcome to read through that, but basically you're going to be trading players and collecting items to sell. This next guy is going to teach you how uh, to use prayer in RuneScape. So talk to him. And here there is a little prayer icon. And you can see all the prayers you have based on your levels. Okay, next below is a friends list. This is where you can add people to be your friend. And this is where you can put people to on your ignore list. Be putting people on your ignore list allows them to not see what you're saying anymore. Basically, you will appear offline for them. And also, you won't be able to see what they're typing in-game. Okay, here we go. We're going to go through the door. 
If you're interested in being an Iron Man, you can talk to these Iron Men. There's a Hardcore Iron Man, Ultimate Iron Man, and Regular Iron Man. I will link below into the description what type of game mode that is. However, if this is your first time playing RuneScape, I highly suggest that you continue on with the tutorial and not be an Iron become an Iron Man. Okay, click the magic book icon and talk to him again. He's going to give you runes, and these runes can be used to make spells. As you can see, this spell with Wind Strike requires air runes and mine runes, which he gave us, and we're going to go ahead and use that on the chicken. Okay, my character decided to run to China or something. <laughs> so go ahead and use that on the chicken and then talk to him again. He's going to say, would you like to go to the mainland? You want to say yes. Have you? Were you planning to be an Iron Man, by the way? Here you can find out what an Iron Man is, or you can watch my video in the description below. However, for this account, I'm going to say no, I do not want to, um, I do not plan on doing that. Okay? And here we are to the mainland of RuneScape. Okay, so once you're in the mainland of RuneScape, you're going to be in a town con called Lumbridge. Okay, and the way you can access your map, which is probably the most important thing for a beginner, is you can go up here to your map and press floating. And see, you can see you're in the town of Lumbridge. Their bank is going to be in this castle and etc. And you can see where you're going and obviously this little shiny arrow is where you are located. So, let's go over some of the basics. For prayer, for recharging your prayer, you can charge them at an altar, etc. And the banks is going to be located with the bank symbol icon. Those are very important in RuneScape because when you die in RuneScape, if anything in your, is in your bank, you won't lose it. But anything in your inventory, you're at risk for losing. So let's go over and go with the death mechanics. When you die in RuneScape, you will show up in Lumbridge and you will save three of your most valuable items. You can go up and pick your items that have fell on the floor once you've died, but you have to go to the exact location where you died. For example... So here we go, I'm about to die with my character, and I will show you what happens. Most people go to Lumbridge, and that is where you can basically um, be back to everything, to normal. And here, as you can see, I died, and every th my three most valuable items are my inventory. Now, if you run back to where you died, you can pick up all your gear. However, the death mechanics in this game are expected to change, so my recommendation is to do your best not to die and to not to assume that you'll be able to be able to pick up your items again, and etc. Players won't be able to see this for a certain amount of time, but after a certain amount of minutes, they will be able to pick up your items. Next, I want to go over basically questing. And the best way to learn in this game is to quest. To attempt quests and to start them in certain locations. It tells you in your quest log what basically skill or where to start the quest. And you can also Google quest guides and their rewards and etc. You will learn the most about the game's lore. And you will unlock every section of RuneScape if you complete all the quests or 95% of it. And it's very fun to learn about the lore of this game and to get all those achievements and really cool armor and gear. Next, I want to talk about all the skills in RuneScape. If you are a free-to-play player, you are limited to the amount of skills that you are able to do. However, if you are a member, you're able to do all of the skills. I highly recommend that you become a member. The way you can do this is somebody can use a bond on you, which will give you 14 days of membership, or you can pay for 30 days of membership reoccurring. So, here I'm going to start to talk about all of the skills at a very as fast as I can in depth. So if you click on the skills, they each have everything that you unlock based off of your level. So for example, at level 5 you unlock Steel, and for attack at level 75 you unlock Staff of the Dead, and that over here you un unlock the Scythe of the... you unlock all these new items basically. Same goes for the Strength, and same goes for the defense skill and etc. Every skill in RuneScape. So attack, basically, as you level it and you get stronger, your character will hit more accurately or more often. And strength, as you level it up, your character will hit harder on NPCs. As you level your defense, 
your character will take less damage from NPCs. Range attack will basically, as you level range, anything with your bow and arrow or a crossbow or a ballista, these are all the weapons that you can use for range, that that will become much stronger based off of your range level, so you will hit more accurate and you will hit stronger. Next is prayer. As you level prayer, you will be able to gain these attributes. The best way to level prayer is through bearing bones or using bones on an altar. So as you level up your prayer, you will have these abilities and these abilities will make you stronger. For example, protect from magic attacks or increasing your range by 15%. There, it's very important. Now the next one is magic. As you level your magic, you will hit stronger with magic spells and you will be more accurate. The next level is rune crafting. Rune crafting creates runes to use for magic. For example, if you look at your spell book, wind strike requires air runes and my runes. In rune crafting, you can create these runes through that skill to use for magic. The next one is construction. Later in the game, this skill enables you to build your own house and to have your own tools and all types of different kind of accommodations. In the game, it's very popular to have house parties and for it to be a social event to communicate with other players. And you can build a lot of different things in your house that will be able to help you in the game to teleport around or to use for storage and etc. Hit points is how, how much damage you take until death. For example, I have 10 hit points. If an NPC hits me for 1 damage, I will be 9 hit points. It's how much life you have, basically. If, though, as soon as you get to 0 life, your character will die. Agility is very important because it shows how long your stamina is on your character for running. So when you click, your character loses run energy. The higher the agility, the slower that goes down, which is very convenient because there's a lot of running in RuneScape. Also, training agility is allows you to unlock marks of grace and etc. And this is a member skill, and I have a guide on how to start agility in RuneScape, which I will link in the description below. The next level is Herbler, and this makes potions that will help you in-game to make your character more powerful. It will increase your attack, strength, defense, etc. Help you extend your prayer, help you have more run energy, etc. Things that will boost your character in combat and bossing in the game. Next is thieving, which will allow you to steal from other characters to get money, food, gems, and whatnot. Next is your crafting level, which is how you can create some types of armor, such as dragon hide armor. It will also allow you to make bowls. It will allow you to cut certain gems and make certain jewelry, which will be very valuable in the game. The next one is fletching. Fletching is, uh, uh, coincides along with range, and what that allows you to do is to make bows and arrows f and crossbows for your ranging skill. The next is Slayer. Slayer is going to be very important in this game and how a lot of people make money. These, are, As you level your Slayer level, you will be able to unlock different monsters. And the higher your Slayer level, the more valuable these monsters become and they will drop very valuable items that you can sell to other players. The next thing I want to say is Hunter. Hunter is a skill that will allow you to capture certain animals that will benefit you in game or uh, certain animals that will give you special items or equipment in game. The next one I'm going to mention is mining. Your mining level depends on what kind of rocks that you can mine in game. And smithing, the next skill, is what you can smith out of those ores and what you can create into armor. So those coincide with each other. The next skill is fishing and that will allow you to have food in game. So if you take damage and you eat a fish, you will heal your hit points. And cooking will allow you to cook those fish in order to be able to eat them. There are other types of food such as pies and etc. that you can also use. The next one is fire making. Fire making allows you to burn the logs that you receive from wood cutting, which is the next skill. There are many different trees in RuneScape in which you can cut, and fire making you can burn them in order to cook on. And there is a very interesting game called Winter Tot in the game that involves fire making and many other skills in order to defeat a boss as a member. Next is the farming skill. And the farming skills allows you to grow different trees, crops, and ointments in order 
to use for food and different things in the game such as herbs and herbs are used for herb lore etc so all of the skills coincide with each other most of these skills are membership items and therefore it's best to become a member if you wish to access all the skill in the game next i want to show you something called the grand exchange also known in other games as the auction house where you can trade with other players using a generated system without manually trading with them so here I'm going to bring up the floating world map and I'm going to be showing you how to get to the Grand Exchange which is north of the city of Varrock, northwest to be exact. So you're going to be following my character up through Lumbridge to Varrock to the Grand Exchange and I will show you all how to get there. Let there be known that your run energy may die out because it is a quite a long run for new players. I highly suggest that, that you train on these goblins with and you fish food and stay in Lumbridge as long as you can until you feel like it's necessary that you want to trade with other players. There are many players in Lumbridge that are willing to help you and to trade with you. But when you're trying to get more advanced in the game and you're wanting to buy specific items to help you with quest and etc, you're able to go to the Grand Exchange. So follow my character and the great thing about the Grand Exchange is that almost any item you need that is tradable, you can buy and sell there. A lot of people like to merch on the Grand Exchange and so it's a very common place and it's also a very nice hangout location. There are multiple different ways you can get to the Grand Exchange, however, this is a very common way. If you're going this route, be very careful of the Dark Wizards because they're level 20 and they can easily kill your character. So as we enter Varrock, you will see these guards. I'm not very sure why my computer feels like lagging right now. But you'll just continuously run north. Varrock is a very interesting town because there's bars, general stores, etc. And there's many different shops here that you can check out. However, everything that they're sold in shops you can buy on the Grand Exchange in RuneScape. Oftentimes at a lower price or the same price. Icons on your mini-map will display whether it's a smithing location or a bank location, etc. So as we go north, we're going to go ahead through here, go through this bank as we can see other players. And here we are to the Grand Exchange. You will start seeing these statues and a lot of people asking for help. A lot of people tend to... Uh, ask for a lot of assistance at the Grand Exchange, such as begging, and people also tend to ask um, for items and etc. At the same time, you have to be very careful in RuneScape because there are scammers, such as people saying they will double your money in coins and etc. Et Try to be very wary of these type of scams. Anyone who says they're going to double your money or etc. may be a bad option and they may be trying to scam you. Let's go ahead and go to the world map to, for me to share the last thing that I would like to discuss with you. And that is the wilderness. Anything above this line in RuneScape is dangerous. North of the Grand Exchange is the wilderness, and this is where other players can attack each other in-game, also known as PKing. It's a very fun event, but it's also very dangerous. So if you w wish to adventure in the wilderness, do so with caution, and make sure that you realize that you will lose any items that people kill with you, kill you with. So let's go ahead and see if I can show you the location or that little line for the wilderness. So as you can see, this big old trench, anything above that trench is the wilderness and other players can attack you. The deeper the, in the wilderness that you go, the more dangerous it becomes. I hope this guide helped y'all out. Thank you so much for watching. It's hard to explain everything in RuneScape. Hello there. And enjoy the game. And if you have any questions, follow me on Twitch. And I will. I do streams. And I'm totally willing to do a live stream to help you guys out. I also am on Twitter. And you're willing to. You're able to private message me 
if you guys want any help. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you enjoy your adventures in RuneScape.